Today we're going to be talking about how to find the limit of a convergent sequence, and in this particular problem we've been given the sequence a sub n is equal to the natural log, or ln, of the quantity 2n squared plus 1 minus the natural log of n squared plus 1. Now one thing that's important to note before we get started with the problem, we've been asked to find the limit of the convergent sequence. So we've already been told that this sequence converges. Simply given the fact that this sequence converges, we know that the limit exists. When you're dealing with a sequence, keep in mind that this does not apply to series at all, only to sequences. But when you're dealing with a sequence specifically, by definition, if the limit exists, then the sequence converges. Therefore, since we've already been told that the sequence converges, it's a convergent sequence, we know that the limit is going to exist. So when we try to find the limit of this as n goes to infinity, we know that we're going to get a real answer as opposed to the limit does not exist. So let's go ahead and try to find the limit. We're going to say the limit as n goes to infinity and we're trying to find the limit of the sequence a sub n. Of course that's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of this right hand side here, the natural log of the quantity 2n squared plus 1 minus the natural log of the quantity n squared plus 1. Now one thing we can do is combine these natural log values here. This is a property of logarithms or a law of logarithms. It tells us that when we have natural log of one value minus natural log of another value, this second value here, the one that's negative, becomes the denominator. This positive value, the first one, becomes the numerator. So what we get is natural log of one quantity here, 2n squared plus 1 divided by n squared plus 1. And we can combine those two using that law of logarithms. Now it's just a matter of finding the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, the way that we're going to do that, whenever you have a rational function like this and, and you've got a polynomial in the numerator and the denominator, the best way to find the limit as n goes to infinity is to divide through each term of both the numerator and the denominator by 1 over the n value with the greatest degree. n squared is the largest degree n value that we have in this quantity. If we had an n cubed, that would be a larger degree value of n because 3 is greater than 2. So n cubed would be greater, n to the fourth would be still greater. We want to take the largest one that we have in either the numerator or the denominator. So for example, if we had n squared in the numerator and we had an n cubed in the denominator, we would want to take the n cubed and divide through every term in both the numerator and the denominator by the n cubed. In this case, they match. n squared is the largest value that we have, so we're going to divide everything through by n squared. So we'll get the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log, and here we're going to get 2n squared over n squared plus 1 over n squared, that's the numerator, so we divided both the 2n squared and the positive 1, both by n squared. Now in the denominator, we're going to get n squared over n squared plus 1 over n squared. Now at this point, we can cancel a couple things. Here in this first term, we're going to get these n squareds to cancel, we'll just be left with 2 there. Same thing here, we're going to get these n squareds to cancel and we're just left with 1. So if we simplify this, we get the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log, and our new value here is 2 plus 1 over n squared, all divided by 1 plus 1 over n squared. Now the reason that we do this, the reason this is convenient, is because when we take the limit as n goes to infinity, and we essentially plug infinity in for n here, when we get in these individual fractions here, when we get 1, as the constant in the numerator and an infinitely large number in the denominator, any constant divided by infinity or some infinitely large number is going to be zero. This here is going to go to zero and this is also going to go to zero. So because those both disappear and go to zero, it simplifies our function. That And that happens when we take the limit as n goes to infinity. So all that we're left with then those two go away, our limit notation goes away because when we take the limit as n goes to infinity, those two drop away. All that we're left with then is just the natural log of 2 over 1, which is also of course just the natural log of 2. And that's it, that's our final answer. This is the limit 
of this sequence, this A sub N sequence, as N goes to infinity.